My name's Lance, and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, we haven't had a little chat, haven't had a chat for a little while now, and um, I haven't been doing a lot exciting to tell you the truth. I've, I've kept working away with the pallet racking around the walls, and we have all the pallet racking up now. There's also a few extra shelves that we had at the old shed that we've been able to fit in on the end, just over behind me there. Um, so now comes the job of sorting more stuff and um, putting it in its allocated spot and hopefully getting a little bit more floor room to get the caravan back inside and, uh, <coughs> and get the tractors in a, in a more orderly fashion. And um, the, the whole idea is to get everything that we need up on the shelves, everything that we don't need out the door. And um, <coughs> we, um, yeah, we'll just get the place with a couple of nice working areas. So as for working <coughs> and um, doing any major projects, any machining, all that sort of thing, well, uh, there hasn't been any of that really going on. We've just been full time cleaning up. And it's Monday morning now. You know, I had a busy weekend. Um, on Saturday morning, the pressure pump on the house, we're on tank water out here because we live on a few acres, and um, the pressure pump was just having trouble starting all the time. And could have been a start capacitor, but I don't know, there's, there's something going on. We've gone through a few pressure pumps now, and, and in 13 years, we've worn three out or buggered three up, one or the other. And I was using the longer brand pumps, and um, yeah, I'm just not sure whether we haven't got a good supply to the pump or not, but we thought that with um, with the younger pumps not lasting very long, we'd change to a different type pump. So we've gone to a Grunfoss pump now, and it's, um, it's a variable speed, and, and the more taps you put on in the house, well, it seems to ramp up to try and keep the same water supply going. So anyway, that that was Saturday morning, trying to sort that out. then. Of course, all the plumbing fittings had to be redone, and the mains coming in are redone. So, and we have two big tanks. Um, they're five thousand gallon tanks that collect rainwater off the house, and we have another three thousand gallon coming off the pool room. And we've got all them plumbed into a little manifold, and then um, the the pump gets a gets us water from them. So it's got plenty of head of water. It's you know got six feet of water above the pump. So. Um, it's not running from running dry that they've been playing up, but anyway, so <clears throat> I thought well if we keep buying the same pump we've been buying all the years and they're failing well um, Yeah, nothing else will well, well, we won't move forward will we so so we've bought a Grunfoss um, And it's it seems fine. It's a little different. You can just notice a slight pulse in the water, but that's nothing um, Yeah, we can have a shower and a cup of tea <laughs> So if you have a cup and a shower well life's pretty good, eh? Yeah, it doesn't matter if you can't wash the dishes, you can always put them on a floor for the dogs, eh? But um, apparently that's not on. Yeah, <laughs> who'd have thought? But anyway, um, the pump was sorted, so that took half a day Saturday, so I got half a day up in Bundy Bear's shed here doing shelving and things like that. Then um, yesterday, I'd, I'd been looking for a boat for a fair while. We thought, um, while we're still working, we'll look for a look for an aluminium boat, a tinny, and something that we can put behind the collie. And on the back of the collie, we've got a camping body that I made with, it's got solar panels and fridge and batteries and all that. And we, we like going away in it. And um, sometimes it's just easier to go somewhere with a ute and camp in the back of the ute and um, instead of towing the caravan places. So. Um, what we thought we'd do is, is buy a boat, um, get a little tinny, and um, we can tow that to the side of a dam and do a bit of bass fishing and yeah, a bit of red clawing, things like that. And then um, the, the back of the ute, we've inside it, and when I made it, I folded it up out of, um, I was saying 1.2 um, steel, zinc, and um, I folded it up out of that and put a few creases for strength. But inside, we've put um, glued marine carpet in there and you buy this marine carpet, it's nice grey in there and you, um, you glue it in with the glue that you use for fake grass and that seems to be the toughest glue and you can spread it out up there, let it, let it go tacky and get it up there so in it, it's, it's very comfy so we've, I'm happy to sleep in there and um, Judy's happy to sleep in there too so um, yeah, 
So yeah, both of us don't mind going that way. It's it's a nice easy thing, and we've got a little um little amenities hoochie tent sort of thing with that we put up there, and that gives us a, a privacy of a shower and, and if we need it, um, a toilet. So it's a good thing. So what we did, we we I've been looking around for boats, and I've oh I've, I've looked and looked and looked, and I've been on the computer, and it's been going on for three or four months, I suppose, but. Um, some of the boats I didn't mind, they were, you know, half a country away. And um, so anyway, we just kept looking and last Friday, um, a mate Wayne got onto us and, uh, well, I asked him had he seen any and he says, oh, my mate's got one he's trying to sell, they've just had a bub and, and um, <coughs> what I mean, and just had a bub and they were looking for, you know, they'd gone back to one wage and they were looking to um, unload a boat. So we went and had a look at it and and so we bought it. So yesterday morning we had a, the fella come and him and his missus and their little bub come and had a yarn for a few hours and we bought the boat off them and um, had a fiddle and a play and you know like a kid with a new toy really. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. Yeah, you to have a good time, aren't you? So <clears throat> so I went into the boat shop and I bought a couple of knickknacks, another seat mount to change things up a bit. It, it can seat five people, so. Um, you know, we can take hopefully um, a couple of kids with a couple of grandkids too. Um, and it's got nice high sides and you know, 50 horse Yamaha two strokes still on the back. Um, whether I've got a two stroke or a four stroke, I, I didn't really mind. The, the four strokes are supposed to be um, better in some ways, but then um, getting up out of the hole, um, the two stroke just zips you straight up out there. And Anyway, we'll see if. Um, I had planned that whatever boat I ended up buying, um, I was talking to Judy about it and I said, look, you know, I don't want any shitbox engines on the back of our boat. We, if we buy a boat and we're not 100% sure about the engine, we'll go and trade the engine in and buy a new one. So, <clears throat> but look, I'm, I'm quite happy with this engine. It's um, electric start, electric, you know, you know, power tilt trim, and um, it's got a bait tank in the back, a live bait tank, and they've spent a lot of money on it. Um, it's got extra pods out the back to step up in, which are quite big. Um, as the people that had it before, they used to do a bit of um, spear fishing and things like that. So um, they got these pods. The, the pod's about two foot square, roughly, out the back. And it sits just under the water by about 100 mil, four inches. And um, they found it easy to, to come up and, and hop on that and get into the boat. So, And <clears throat> that was something that we liked because... Um, a couple of old farts getting into the boat to start with, <laughs> it's got to benefit us. And then um, getting the kids in and out and things like that, it was a good a good thing for that. And then they've also put a 120 litre fuel tank that they've actually got built into the floor. Um, so you haven't got to have the red pots playing around there. And, and there's a hummingbird sounder that, um, well at this stage it's smarter than me. <laughs> I gotta, I'm going to have to sit up at the house and Google how to work it all and all that. He, he showed me, he took some time to show me about it, but uh, yeah, look, I, I, when he was there pressing the buttons, I could sort of understand it. Ten minutes after he went away, I was thinking, well, oh, crap, what am I going to do here? So um, I'll, I'll get in there, and um, he didn't have a book with the sounder. He said, oh, they just gave him a disc, which they didn't know where that was. So um, surely Hummingbird will have it on, um, on, on the web there somewhere. I haven't had a look yet. But... Um, <clears throat> So yeah, yesterday we got a new boat, so I was wagging my tail and um, it's got a different trailer plug on it, so I've, I whizzed into the boat shop to grab a new trailer plug and then I, um, oh, a couple of nav lights, you know, the, the red and the greens, um, it's got the an anchor light on the boat but, and it's got the place for the nav lights, but the two little ones left and right, or port and starboard now on the boat, you go, hey everybody, quick learner, mate. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, the two nav lights, they, um, they'll probably go on today. And, and perhaps a new trailer plug and then um, another seat mount so it, it, it's got the wide sides so you can move the seats around within the boat so we'll, well, I'd like to change that a little bit and um, we'd like to put a boat cover on it so uh, when we're heading off camping if the kids are coming or something like that and we'd like to put the kayaks in, the kayaks will fit on the floor, it's a nice clear floor um, and yeah, you can put a bit of camping stuff in there too. So, so the boat's a good thing. Um, I'll, I'll take you for a little walk around it shortly. 
and um, you might hear a little bit of spit of spatter on the roof. It looks like it's starting to shower a little bit. So um, in Bundy Bay shed, it gets bloody noisy when it rains, but that's all right. We'll just we'll just soldier on for a bit. Um, I also did a little bit of eBay buying. <laughs> Who'd have thought, eh? Um, and uh, look, just a couple of job lots, and one one job lot had a um, had a harmonic balancer puller on it, and it's a Lyle harmonic balancer puller. And the reason I bought this was that I had one, and it was a great thing. I used it quite often, but when I sold the workshop, I um, I had to up. Well, I sold it with the workshop, so I thought it'd be a handy thing to have. So um, some old fellow was getting rid of a heap of tools, so. We picked up the Lyle harmonic balance of four set and it's got a heap of bolts in it. But um, in the job lot there was another other few knickknacks which I, I didn't mind. Um, this here, uh, that's a piston ring um, groove cleaner. When you're doing an engine up, um, you get carbon in around the ring. So the piston goes in here and this little cutter here, that sits in the ring groove and you just drag this around the piston and that cleans the carbon out for you already have one of these but that's well we'll just put it with the other one now I probably won't be able to find two of them but it's at the same time There's, there was also an old rich dual signal torque wrench and um, oh, I hadn't seen these in years and um, it was only $50 for the whole lot so um, yeah I've got a lot of toys in it <laughs> and uh, that rich one I'll do a bit of a test later and just see how accurate it still is that would be old like that would be 60s 70s I, I, I think. Um, I did my trade in the 70s and I reckon one of the older fellas had one of these there then so um, so yeah that's just a little half inch square drive one. Um, yeah old tools, I love old tools. Um, but yeah we'll, we'll put that away somewhere <coughs> and then there's a there's this fella here. Now isn't that a wild looking jigger? And it's for bleeding the lifters down. Um, sometimes you can get a bit of an airlock in a lift or something like that so yeah you just hook her in you just slowly bleed them down um, and then you can you know, fill them up with oil again. But that I'll, That's a Falcon tool I'll use for a Ford um, probably a six cylinder car I, I would think but not sure. Um, that'll just sit in a drawer somewhere I don't imagine I would be using that. Then, oh, it's like Christmas every day, eh? And there's a little King Chrome oil filter spanner. That'll just go over to where we service the service the gear. Three eight drive. You just turn it and it, it clamps down onto the clamps down onto the filter, and away it goes. It's got a knurling on the on the leg, but look how good they work. I I don't know. I've never used one. Um, I usually use a caterpillar strap. Another thing in the little kit was a timing chain gear puller for a Morris Woolsey overhead. Yep, yeah, a 1949 to 59 Morris and Woolsey overhead valve model timing gear puller. So fancy that, eh? Yeah. I don't have any of them, but it's a funny little tool. Uh, if you have one of those cars and you need to get a gear off, hey, that's a go. But um, that'll get tucked away. I do have a few pulls. Well, I have a few that I don't know what they do. So um, I've bought them with, like this with job lots of stuff, so they'll get tucked away. And, and yeah, now and then when I've got a, something a little bit out of the ordinary to do, I, I do go for the box and have a bit of a look and see if this fits and that fits and sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't so not to worry we got um, we'll survive and another part of the reason I bought this job lot was I also sold some of my flaring tools and um, this fella here yeah we have the clamp and the and the um, well I don't know what you'd call that that'd be another clamp I suppose but anyway, um, I bought this one. It's it's good for single flaring, um, but I would say that for the double flare, there's usually a little tit that goes down into the pipe, 
with a curl on it and that, that rolls the edge the first way and then you can you can go again. So um, if I had to, I'd make a couple of those if, if the need arises, but um, mostly for me it's just um, a little fuel line on a tractor or something like that. So um, I've got bits and pieces there with this. Um, but yeah, look, we'll, it was one of those things that was just in there and I, it was one of the things that helped me buy the buy the job lot because I thought well that might sort of help along with some of the other things that I've done there. So that'll be alright I reckon but what else is in there? Well there's a few um the stud <laughs> I should have had that out shouldn't I? But yeah the stud remover yeah for um to, to get a to get a stuck stud out you you just slide this over the stud, the knurling here clamps hard on the stud and undoes it. Um, I have a couple of short ones of these, so that'll just um, that'll just add to that. It must have had a bit of a problem one time. You can see a little few centre pop marks on the bottom there. So this this anvil must have, or the knurling must have come loose at some stage. And um, it's been in a lathe. You can see chuck marks. So yeah, so look at That'll go with the other stuff, and a little um, a little brake caliper back off too, you know, just to move them to disc brakes. So that's about that for for that little thing. But then the other lot that we bought was in this here, and you remember a few Bundy Bears kangaroo stews ago, I bought a, a ridge remover, and I've had a look at it, and I thought, oh. You know, some of the sizes, there was just something missing in it, and I, uh, I wasn't 100% sure about it. So, anyway, I saw this this old mechanic selling his stuff, and he had ridge removers there, and he said, Oh, you know, ridge removers and parts for ridge removers. So, I thought, Oh, well, that's probably worth a crack. So, I, I bought that off of eBay, and, um, and I sat down and started looking at it when I got it home. Well, with the with the ream, oh, with the ridge remover set, um, yeah, this sits here. Then you, you turn this, and that cuts the ridge off the top of a bore. If you're going to re-ring something, or you know, on, on the older gear, it's a reasonably common thing to have to do. And it automatically, as as you as you turn it to cut the um, cut the lip off the bore, um, it automatically feeds down a little bit. It's a very fine thread. And it automatically feeds down a little bit, so so I thought well, that that might complete my other set, and so I bought it, and well I started putting parts together, thinking gee, oh, bloody, looks like a lot of gear here. Well, I've put it together, and these um, they're proper rich tools, and there's three full sets there. We've made up three complete sets, and we still have a couple of bits left over. Um, <clears throat> I mean, and my other one, the, the red one I bought earlier, um, I've worked out that it is complete with how you set it up. Well, I was setting it up a bit wrong, yeah, the way I was doing it. And, um, I hadn't clicked into that particular brand as I'd never used one before of that sort. So anyway, so now I've got four ridge removers. So whatever she needs really, isn't it? Four ridge removers, so, <coughs> pardon me. And so, yeah, so I've had a bit of a fun time in buying stuff. Um, uh, yeah, some of it will sit in the bottom drawer of the toolbox and never to be seen again, and other stuff will be sorted out. So, with the with the ridge remover kits, we'll we'll detail them all up. We'll we'll tidy them up, clean the threads. Um, uh, yeah, just just make them nice and presentable and ready to use when we need them, and we'll tuck them away. So. So yeah, that's about it for for Bundy Bear's purchases. So um, yeah, I might take it for a bit of a walk. I'll just show you a bit of the pallet racking I'm doing. The shed's still a bloody mess. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be hard to trip over and break your neck, really. But um, yeah, we'll watch what we're doing, eh? And I'll take it for a bit of a walk and just um, show you what I've been up to, just out of interest sake. Um, I might do a little bit of machining later, and look, as in machining, it's just drilling holes in a plate. My old 1928 Chev is over here, and I, I can roll around the shed on the front wheels, but I used to have a little trolley under the back diff, and I could wheel it around, but the, 
it, it's never successful so I've come up with an idea now that I can throw a caster wheel under each spring where the diff would sit and put a clamping plate down over the top and clamp that in and that should let me move the back of the track no, back of the tractor um, the back of the Chevy sideways and round and that so I've got a place over the corner that I'd like to put it and keep it out of the weather until we get interested in it again or you know, spins our wheels enough to have a crack at it and um, so yeah I've, I've thought I'll with these caster wheels I'll I'll drill a couple of plates and, and clamp them on with a couple of 3-8 bolts and, and that'll make it pushable in the shed on a nice concrete surface so so I might do a bit of that today if I get a chance or it, it just depends what's going on if it rains and Bundy Bear's shed um, gets a bit noisy on the roof here well I won't do any filming because you won't be able to hear a bloody thing what I'm doing I'll have to sing or something rather. Well, I could sing then, you wouldn't be able to hear me, so that'd be all right. But, um, but anyway, we'll just see how we go. Um, but yeah, yesterday, as I was saying, we bought the boat, then we had visitors and then other visitors, and, which is good. People to catch up with, you don't see them often, some of your visitors or some of your friends. You, you're always in touch in one way or another, or you see their posts on Facebook, and so you, um, you, you keep in touch like that, you know what's happening in their lives to a point. And um, so yeah, they come and have a chat, and it's it's great to see them again. And um, then last night we had yeah, more visitors <laughs> again till about half past nine. So um, that was all right too. I found the Scotch bottle, and um, yeah, a little bit of Bundy rum liqueur. They've got a new salted caramel liqueur out. So after dinner, yeah, before dinner it's a few Scotch and waters, and then after dinner she's liqueur on ice. And oh, she could be, but. Um, yeah, I don't think <laughs> I don't think you want to sit with a whole bottle. I tell you, but um, it's good stuff. So, so yeah, we haven't got a lot done. We've had we've bought stuff. We've had visitors. We've yeah had a pretty nice time, but um, we haven't had much that's been film worthy. So, so look, stay tuned. I'll take you for a little walk around the shed and just show you a little bit of what I've been up to, and um, yeah, we'll just go from there. See what happens. In along here, we've got a bit of old shelving. That's old shelving from the other shed. We've got two runs along there. And as we come up through, I'll try and not knock you around too much. We've got another bay of pallet racking in there. That's a heap of little international Model M, one and a half horsepower engines. And we've got another 20 odd feet of pallet racking down there. With this, this shelf here with all this stuff on, that's just gotta be sorted and the, the shelves will be disposed of then coming through we've, we're starting to get some of our heavier products up on the pallet racking that's a four horsepower international famous that's a whole and next to that is the whole back end of a Ferguson TE20 and we have shelving from the shop hanging around <laughs> being a bloody nuisance and yeah all the pallet racking the pallet racking comes along right the way way up to the other end there now so and that's the old Chevy that um, yeah I've got a lot of parts for that but it's just not on the radar just at the moment I've got to pull that filler out of that guard out of that firewall that's not on the agenda just yet and right up the other end I might be able to zoom up yeah, you can just see the back of the boat. So we'll go up there and have a proper look. Right, this is around the back of our little boat. 50 horse yammy on the back. That's a good thing. Now down here where I've got my I've got my knickknacks, my trailer plugs and things. They're the steps that they've put on the back. One each side. That's a handy thing. And then up inside it's all clear floor. So there's a couple of seat mounts up further and we're going to just adjust them a little bit, put a different sort in. Um, nice wide top, um, wide beam. Then they also did some nice welding on a little switch um, console there. That's where the sounder and all goes. And But yeah, all in all, she's a nice little boat. I'll, I'll have a bit of a fiddle. We're going to put a sunshade on it. Um, a bimini um, cover so we have a bit of shade for when the kids are with us and hopefully the kids uh, yeah part of it's we've got um, little grand 
daughter coming up and um, yeah she's coming up to a good age where she could hop in and come for a bit of a play for the day with us so yeah a bit of shade keep everyone comfortable so but yeah there it is it's it's around 15 foot long that's it's a seascape they're made on the Gold Coast it's a three millimeter plate boat um, so um, it's, it's a lot heavier than some which is all right 452 is 4.52 meters but it's actually um, when you actually run the tape over it's quite a bit longer it's a little bit um, j just from the back to the nose I think we're running at 4.7 or something like that I, I just can't quite remember and um, but yeah it's a good tough boat then down in the middle of the floor where those fellows are there's a, that's where the 120 litre fuel tanks built in and um, they've got some beautiful welding a black badge did it they tell me up at Rosedale so <clears throat> um, yes it's it's okay it hasn't got a spare tyre so that's on the list and um, because we like to go to and around a little bit we'll probably put a, um, a hub stub package on it you know with a set of wheel bearings and things like that so if we're out and about and we get a flat or we have wheel bearing troubles um, we'll be okay we we probably won't have bearing troubles I'm a fiddler so I um yeah yeah I couldn't bear to think I had a bear had a shitty wheel bearing and um and the trailer at the back um it, you, you can't really see it but the the trailer's in good nick and the um everything's been teched old and things like that and then um the trailer's set up so you can actually just drive the boat on just back in and drive it on so at the moment it's in the hoist bay and the job for the day, the most important job probably, is to, um, yeah, put a trailer plug on it. So anyway, I'll have a fiddle along, and um, yeah, that's it. That's the exciting news for the week. And that's just a view around the front end and the, the boat trailer. Yeah, got anchor well and good rails and it's nice deep sides for the grandkids, so that's part of it too. So yeah, you should be able to party in there, eh? Anyway, that's the boat. Here you go. Um, we're gonna call that a wrap. Thanks for dropping in and seeing what we're doing. Um, yeah, we enjoy it. We're coming up to a thousand subscribers shortly. Um, yeah, probably in the next week or so. Um, we'll see what we do for that um, but yeah look please subscribe um, then you'll get little five little chats as we go so um, look try and subscribe leave a message well I like to have a bit of a bit of a chat after a kangaroo stew um, a few comments and things I've got a few regulars that drop in every time and, and I really enjoy it and um, yeah so like subscribe have a chat and um, yeah try and keep out of mischief eh? catch you later